Welcome and aloha to Think Tech Hawaii. <clears throat> it's Thursday. Actually, you may be seeing this on a different day, <clears throat> but November 10th. And we're going to talk about <clears throat> the tea leaves of the uh, midterm elections and <clears throat> whether there's anything we can read in those at this point and what it might be. And we have the good fortune, the special good fortune to have with us today, <clears throat> Professor Emerita Cornelia Randall from the University of Dayton School of Law, who's in Orlando, Florida, and is surviving Hurricane Nicole. And hopefully many people there do get through it as intact as possible. <clears throat> Jeff Portnoy, one of our leading First Amendment lawyers and scholars, a partner at Cade Shuddy, and long respected spokesperson and personality in sports announcing in Hawaii as well. And Tim Apicella, Think Tech host and man about town and- And provocateur, you forgot that. Yeah, <laughs> raconteur, entrepreneur, and other words that end in your. So, okay. <laughs> Jeff, you want to start us off? Well, I'm glad you mentioned you Hurricane. Reading? I'm glad you mentioned hurricane because that's my analogy of the election. <laughs> you know, the Democrats and the Republicans were expecting a category five and you get a category two. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how happy the Democrats really are because depending upon what happens in Georgia, and that's really significant, but if Herschel Walker, the alleged sexual predator, manages to win, the Republicans have everything they could ever hope for. They have the House, maybe not with 30 votes uh, in excess of the Democrats, but enough to control the House. And frankly, it gives Marjorie Greene and her crew way more power than they otherwise might have had. And they have the Senate. So yes, if you're a Democrat, it's much better than you thought, but you still got substantial damage to your House. Tim, your take? My take is, <clears throat> if I look at the GOP as a patient, um, this patient has had a fever for six years, Trump fever. And as of Tuesday, the fever broke and the temperature is starting to come down. That is great news. And that's why, even though it's a Cat 2 hurricane that hit the town, I'm happy as a clam. How happy well, are clams, by the way? Oh, yeah, I've I'm never, taking interviews with them. Very, very happy. I've yeah. never seen a clam smile, by the way. Oh, well, just look look closer and you'll see it. Okay. Especially if there's a <laughs> pearl inside of it. Yeah, well, yeah, I got it. <laughs> well, the temperature for the GOP may be coming down, but with J.D. Vance, Herschel Walker, and others, <laughs> it's still in triple digits. <laughs> Professor Randall, what are well, your thoughts on where we wind I up. don't care enough to be to say anything <laughs> about the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh, it's half a dozen one yeah, or a dozen of another, half a dozen another for me. What I followed more closely was the uh, ballot amendments that were on the ballots outlawing slavery. Uh, and involuntary servitude. Most people, most people should know by now that the Thirteenth Amendment didn't outlaw all uh, all forms of slavery and uh, and 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 involuntary servitude, and in fact, made it legal in uh, exempted. I shouldn't say make it exempted as a punishment for crime. So there's about 20 states that have constitutions that include language, similar languages as the federal amendment permitting slavery on a state level uh, uh, and involuntary uh, servitude as a criminal punishment. Colorado was the first to remove the language from their constitution uh, by followed by Nebraska and Utah. And then this yesterday or Tuesday, Alabama, Louisiana, Oregon, uh, Tennessee, and Vermont uh, 
had ballot measures that would uh, remove slavery and uh, and involuntary involuntary servitude for as a punishment for crime from the from their constitution. All of them passed except, I believe, Louisiana. And the right. only reason Louisiana didn't pass is because uh, the original author of it realized that the language that they had put forth was going to include a lo loophole that would allow uh, continuation of the uh, a punishment for crime. I'll kind of stop. So that's where I'm happy to see that. But I also realize that that really does, I mean, that's good to get rid of the language, but the prison industrial complex that allows corporations to hire people in prison for minimum wage, uh, not minimum, <laughs> pennies on a dollar, uh, may uh, may continue even in those states because it may not be defined as slavery or involuntary servitude. And that's kind of going to be left up litigation for the, to see if they in, uh, define being punished if you refuse to work for for those low amounts as involuntary slavery too. So I was happy to see that and it's an advancement, um, certainly is an advancement to have more states at least remove the language. Um, so there we go. So I mean, if you watch the maps over the last couple of days, it just confirms what everybody already knew. We have two countries. I mean, that's the bottom line. We have one country on the East Coast and the West Coast. And then we have the massive red states from the Alleghenies to the Rockies, with some rare exceptions. And that hasn't changed. Uh, you know, I mean, for a J.D. Vance to win in Ohio is, is just beyond me. For Herschel Walker to get, what, almost two million votes? It's is, is just beyond me for what may eventually wind up in Arizona, where I have a brother who early in the evening I called and said, thank God. And he said, you wait, because by Friday, you're not going to say the same thing. The crazies are going to win. And right now, the crazies are hanging on. I don't know why Arizona can't count the last 20 percent of their votes. But that's what we have, right? We got red all over the middle of the country and for the most part, blue on the coast. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Professor, there's no other color that I can find. How about green? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, there wasn't any other color. How about color. yellow? Oh, well, actually, there's somebody <laughs> on my on my Facebook page because I basically said I, I put up after I, I was going to be a spoiler and say ahead of time that I wasn't going to vote because uh, I wanted people to make independent decisions for themselves. But I did put up afterwards on my, I have a Facebook page called uh, Racism, Race, Racism and the Law, like my, my uh, homepage. And I put up that I didn't vote this year, mainly because I, uh, and it was an apathy because it, the people, saying that people don't vote because they're apathetic. No, they don't vote because they're not given choices that they want to vote for. I, I think that, uh, I think Donald Trump has uh, now in a position where I think he has a very significant uphill battle to try to get the Republican nomination for president. I have no doubt that he's declaring he's got an ego. And frankly, Professor Randall, you might get a third choice because I don't <laughs> think he's backing off even if he can't get the Republican nomination. Well, I mean, he's I, not a progressive socialist, so. Well, I know, I, but you he, wanted a third choice. You're going to get one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's right. <laughs> 
is so that's a great point jeff is there a real possibility that we could see for example biden desantis and trump all on the ballot god wouldn't that be wonderful wouldn't that make our day <laughs> if that ever were to occur <laughs> i i think it's got a possibility i mean Everything you read about Trump says he ain't backing off. And if he doesn't get the nomination, I I see him and it's 25 or 30 percent of the crazies mounting a, a campaign. I mean, we could be back in what, 1912? The Bull Moose Party is on the rise. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the know nothings. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> And that didn't work out that well either. No, it didn't. <laughs> um, can I just jump in here since we're talking about Donald Please. Trump? And, you know, I've been watching Fox News, believe it or not. And um, and <clears throat> the Murdoch uh, stations and, and, and media companies, I think, have turned on Donald Trump. Uh, particularly when I saw um, Laura Ingram say the following. A populist movement is about ideas. It's not about one person. If the voters conclude that you're putting your own ego or your own grudges ahead of what's good for the country, they're going to look elsewhere, period. Laura Ingram has been a full-on cheerleader for Donald Trump for six years. This is a monumental uh, quotation from her. Even, even Trump's friend, Carl Tucker, Tuckerson, said the Carlson, excuse me, Tucker Carlson, said, Donald Trump's always been a mixed blessing. Wow. Uh, that's an understatement, but that's what he said. You so, know how many times? You know how many times DeSantis has been on Fox News? I think I read in this article. I could be off over five hundred times. What do you think? They're not stupid. Think? They're not stupid. They see the tea leaves. Well, and and Donald <laughs> Trump sees the tea leaves, and this is what he said on his uh, you know, his glorious media company, Truth Truth Social. He said, "For for me, Fox News has always gone." even in 2015 and 16 when I began my journey, but now they're really gone. Such an opportunity for another media outlet to make an absolute fortune and do good for America. Well, that's my point. That's my point about, I wouldn't be shocked if he runs for president on, the, on his own ticket, <laughs> named after him. Sponsored by True Social. How about that? <laughs> and you know, I, I, the progressives aren't happy either. The so-called progressives. <laughs> they've, they've got no chance over the next two years. Zero chance. Zero. So where are they going to be in two years? Right? But won't, I mean, but there's won't no they question. Expect, Go ahead. Sorry. Won't they expect their agenda to still be implemented like the Dreamers uh, movement and, um, you know, things of that of that nature? Don't they expect those things to be accomplished even with a split Congress? I doubt that they expect it, but I expect, I know what I expect, and I don't consider myself a progressive, because I just, the progressive in the Democratic Party is just a capitalist that's to the left. Uh, so, uh, I think my observation of them is, is that they don't expect for the split Congress to come forth with bills, but what they've always expected, which I think is not reasonable because they provide support, is that their views and ideas are represented in bills and that bills are being put forth. And that the democratic leadership wants the progressive wing to help them when they want the help. And then they want them to be quiet the rest of the time uh, so that they can play like that, this, so that they can be in the middle, be a moderate without much uh, uh, pushback. And the more the progressives talk and put stuff out there about alternative ways of doing things that's not consistent with the Democratic Democrats, 
uh, view of doing things. I think the reason it took uh, uh, Biden so long to do something about the student loan and why he did so little is only because the progress. I think Biden wouldn't have been, would have abandoned that if he could have. Uh, but it was through the push of progressives and other that he finally said, okay, here's $10,000, now shut up. Uh, well, I think they're quiet because they shot themselves in the, their own toes when uh, Representative Javiapal Javi put out a letter stating that the administration should negotiate on the Ukraine uh, uh, cease of hostilities. I mean, what a, what a, what a mistake that was. And um, did they think about it? No, they didn't think about it. They just did it. And then she had the uh, chutzpah to blame her staff for it. Um, yeah. That doesn't sell well. I, I think one potential lesson from this campaign is I think the country is tired of the far left and the far right. I really do, with rare exceptions. And there are exceptions. We can go through them on both sides. But I think, I look at Colorado, and I think that's the future, hopefully, of American politics. A governor who put together a coalition of moderates, sorry, Professor, you know, Democrats and some Republicans and a lot of independents. And I think that's where the country is. I think the country is tired of gridlock extreme views in the majority's view. And yeah, there's always going to be some percentage way on the left and some percentage way on the right. But unfortunately, over the last four to six years, those extremes have essentially tried to control the political landscape. And I just think people are tired of it. And uh, I think they want to see something done. It may not be exactly what they want, I mean, but when you hear people talking about doing away with Social Security on the right or on the left, what you just said, you know, let's work with Russia so they can keep as much as Ukraine as they want. I mean, that that ain't going to that ain't going to work anymore, I don't think, at least in the future. Except for the fact that people I mean, one of the things that happens is people are always talking about what Americans want without referring to the polls of what they want. And when you look at the polls, what America want is progressive measures. They want education, they want housing, they want, uh, 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 you know, the ability to have a job that will pay for their, their uh, uh, basic living. They want that. They settle for less because they don't feel like they can get any more. Well, you speak about and polls, think, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I just read a poll uh, some time ago. It was maybe a couple of months ago that was polling what uh, the views of Americans on these different things. And they, 80, 90% of Americans, what we, what we, typically call progressive ideas, they are for. Uh, and in fact, what some people call socialist ideas, they are for the ideas when they're debunked from the, the rhetoric and politics of it all. But I'm not sure, you know, Jeff, when you say America wants, maybe they are tired, but they're not tired of having if, if given the choice, if told, you can have a government that's middle of the road that accomplishes very little, or you can have a government that accomplishment X, they're going to want, I think, could be wrong, they're going to want X. They're depends going to want on where those progressive ideas. It, I think it depends on where you live. But, you know, you were asking for lessons, just to digress a little bit here, and you guys jump in. How many more years that we have to now understand the polls are worthless. They're wrong. They're manipulated. They're wrong about they, they don't, they don't, who's they going don't, to win. Well, I'm talking about the political poll. I'm not talking about the issue polls. Uh, okay. Even then, I'm not so sure. 
because, you know, we're, we're, we're a 50 state country, unfortunately, for the, for the, for the issue polls. I mean, I would agree with you that maybe 15 states, the majority are wanting what you've just indicated they want. And I can tell you, in my whole view, 25 or 30 states say no. And you just look at abortion. Uh, you know, even though it's flipped a little bit now because it's become so extreme on the other side. Uh, you know, you take a national poll on abortion and it's 70 percent want to give a woman the right to choose. But you take a state by state poll, it ain't 70 percent. It may be 90 in New York and so it's 35 in are, Idaho. <laughs> you four state rights. Uh, that's a very interesting question because that has taken a loaded term. <laughs> mm -hmm. States rights. No, no, I'm I not. Mean, I, I, not we're, we're a federal. That. Well, I think we're a federal republic, but I think, I think there, you know, there's a balance there, and and I think that's always an interesting political question. You know, does the federal government control uh, uh, everything, or are there issues that are uh, more more appropriately within the states? And I think that's very tough. Because I, I no, I'm not for states' rights because of the connotation that it has. Well, I, I'm separate. I, the thing that bothers me right now is that the there is a desire to have state rights, except when the states go against. So, what in take be it abortion. Or, 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 and abortion may be a good example because both the Democrats and the Republicans take basically the same stance on abortion. We're going to force every state in the country to adopt laws that are consistent with the value of our party. And we're going to close it under whatever language we want to clothe it. But the thing is, is if either it, and, and this is more of a Republican thing that I think I could be wrong. Uh, if you really believed in state rights, then you would say, the, the Republicans would not say we're going to pass a federal law forcing an abortion ban of any kind because uh, states have the right to do that at a state level. Um, I think, uh, you know, Jim, Tim, you can weigh in. I mean, I, I think, and this is, I got no proof. I think the majority of people in each state would want their own state to come up with their own law on abortion and not have the federal government get involved and not criminalize it. All right, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, Alabama criminalizing abortion that takes place in Connecticut. But I think there's merit to having each state and each state's voters decide that issue, as long as it doesn't try to impact their next door neighbor's position on it. That, I really think that's where the majority of the country is. I don't think they want a national abortion law one way or the other. I don't know. I, I, I think it's convenient for every state to blame the federal government for problems <laughs> within that state. Um, it's just so easy to do it, and they've done it for 100 and, or 240 years. Blame, blame the feds for it. Um, but, you know, not again to a federalist argument here, but um, consistency amongst 50 states is kind of an important concept. And Jeff, you hit it on the nail as far as don't impact the state next to you. And I'm, I'm not thinking about abortion, I'm thinking about gun, gun control and uh, how that really um, impacts states that uh, are loosey-goosey with their gun laws and uh, those states that are, have a very strict um, interpretation of your right to bear and carry arms. So that's why the feds are you know, a very important entity to ensure consistency and equal application of the law. And you without know, I, equal application of the law, um, we have basically a chaotic, uh, and we don't look like a United States. 
of America. You know, we just reading, look like states of America. Yeah, I, I, I was reading an excerpt from the new Lincoln biography. I have not read the whole thing. It's on by, my by Kindle. Mitchum? Yeah. Oh. And, you know, people don't, I didn't, really understand Lincoln's position on federalism and, and on slavery. He was not anti-slavery, quote unquote. He thought it was a state's issue and that, you know, each state could make a decision on slavery. Although him personally, he, he did, was not in favor of slavery, but he just wanted to preserve the union and didn't believe that you could have, you know, a, a section of the country that would, uh, you know, secede and, and uh, because of that, that one issue. And then he was forced, of course, because of the Civil War to fight to keep the country together. But, you know, it, it's a fascinating issue because, you know, you say states' rights and you think of George Wallace, right? <laughs> uh, at least I do. And, and that's why it's not, it's, it's a term that, you know, it's very hard for me to gr grasp because... It's kryptonite. Yeah, <laughs> as you say it. But, but you know... Um the, the only reason, I mean, I grew up in Texas doing Jim Crow, so I understand. Yeah, so you know, yeah, yeah I, I don't. And I use the term deliberately because what I have found is no matter what, for instance, uh, states, states pass laws <laughs> to control municipal municipalities within their state. And so you end up with laws that, uh, are passed only to control particular municipalities and doing things that they don't want to do. I'm thinking about in uh, years and years ago before the housing crash, before anybody was paying any attention to what banks and housing people were doing uh, with predatory lending going on, uh, Dayton, uh, the city I lived in at the time, passed the law uh, attempting to do something to deal with predatory lending. The state refused to do something, but then they passed the law saying, oh no, you can't do anything either because we've got to have uniformity among all of the cities and people coming into our thing. So it, it becomes, the, the whole thing becomes both a way to control and restrict. Uh, and the fact is, in that kind of area, people who only represent 13% of the population, in, like Black people, even in states where they may be 30, 40% of the population, uh, end up, up on the short end of the stick because they don't have control of the environment like You know, that. I haven't seen the... Uh the polling, quote unquote. I'm curious as to how many African Americans voted for Herschel Walker. Five percent female, eight percent male. Is that, is that what Walker, it was? Yes. Herschel Walker. And this is the same <laughs> thing because this goes every year. Black people, for the most part, know when someone's going to be problematic and in terms of representing them. And Herschel Walker, the thing that I read up to this point was put in by white people. Uh, oh, sure. And, 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 and the, 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 he did not get. How, how, many, how, how many white people voted for Warlock? I don't know. I was just looking. No, no, yeah, and I'm it's just I'm just very curious. No, I'm a you know eight percent male. I can understand because he was a huge football hero, and you know I can see males, black or white, voting for him if they have no other uh, uh, education other than sixth grade. But uh, five percent of the women that that's pretty surprising to me. Well, I mean, the thing is, five percent of black people, not five percent of the population. no, no, yeah, I meant that, yeah. But the thing is, is black people have a complicated history. They're conservative, a large part, especially down there, and he he touted and uh, he touted a conservative message. Uh, it uh, 
a religious message. Although war He's running against the referee. <laughs> I know. That's what I was getting ready to say. Although that shouldn't have played off as well. But uh I mean the thing is, is you know, who knows why people latch on to wanting to vote someone. And I don't think it's about being uneducated. No, I, 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 I look at all of the educated white people who vote voted for for him. The oh, age. no, I understand that. Yeah. You know, there, have to, let sorry, me just jump in here. There's a lot of in. people that said they were going to vote for Herschel Walker, not because they, they you know, ha he had credibility. They, they said they knew that he had problems with the truth, but that didn't matter because it was all about flipping the Senate. And yeah, so therefore, right. that was the primary issue. Didn't matter about his character. Didn't matter about his, you know, um, the the um, hypocrisy of of abortion versus um, the ones that he paid for that didn't matter. It was all about the power structure of the Senate. Good point. And we're uh, out of yeah. time for today, but that's a good place to wind up. <laughs> we don't know where we're headed, except we're certainly headed for a runoff. Reverend Warnock, Herschel Walker, we'll see where that winds up and where that leaves us. Come back and join us in a couple of weeks. Support Think Tech Hawaii and thank you all. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.